He charged me with resisting arrest. Get that confidence in jail. I object. Hello, fellow patriots, and welcome back to another episode of Allegedly Bravo. I'm Cash. And I'm Lauren. Hi, how are you? Wow. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. You guys, it's never an episode of Allegedly Bravo without some technical difficulties. Exactly. Like, is it an episode if we didn't have to spend an hour beforehand trying to figure out what to do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this exactly. is like our 30th one, too. Like, you'd think by now we'd have the hang of it. And unfortunately, we just don't. And I truly live with, like, IT. And still. Yeah. And I use my computer every single day for work. You know, I've had to my Wi-Fi. We've had, had some significant Wi-Fi issues. We've been having Wi-Fi outages throughout our neighborhood. But then we got it up. We got connected to the 5G. And I think it's Zoom. I'm blaming Zoom. We, it's I would out of love our control. to blame Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. I'm blaming. But other than that, doing great. It's a Saturday, man. Oh, I love Saturdays. And I've had such a good Saturday. Like, we woke up. Um, we went to, like, the thrift store and did some thrift shopping and then I went to the pet store while my man went to Lowe's I said bye I'll come back in a half hour Mm -hmm. and I got to play with a chinchilla and then I got to eat like the best cheeseburger ever and now I'm here like I can't (laughs) wait inform the listeners of this chinchilla journey you're on oh my god okay I (laughs) we can't have a dog in the place that we're living right now um, and my George Glass is so allergic to like cats and really everything. So I was like, well, I, I mean, need rightfully to have, so. I need to have a full though, like animal, you know, like snuggling mm-hmm. all the time. Um, so I looked it up and chinchillas are relatively like hypoallergenic and they don't, they really just like eat hay. So I've been on the hunt and I finally found a cute little bonded pair. So Mm -hmm. I might be getting a chinch. Or it sounds like two. It sounds like two. Well, I said one, but George Glass is like, if if one, why not two? And I was like, that's I love you. So I'm going to get two. I feel like (laughs) I feel like we got to get you a chinchilla coat. And so you can just be walking around a faux one, of course. A faux one, of course. I'll be like, I'm your mommy. The chinchies. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hi, so I'm dark. your mommy. So <laughs> Come cuddle me. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you were having an exciting Saturday. Thank you. And there's no better way than to top it off with a little bit of a debriefing on all things housewives. And we're doing a little housewives adjacent and just some pop culture kind of moments that have happened over the course of the last couple of weeks because it has been a minute since I have it, been on the pod, guys. Work has, it been, has been nuts. But that's okay. So we chose some fun stories just to talk about. I think we have, what, four or five? Yeah. Depending on how you look at it, it could be four, it could be five. You know, and again, going housewives adjacent and totally non-housewives because there are a few that I just want to talk about. And please don't add us. Don't come for us. Don't tell us, hey, look, you guys pride yourselves on being a Bravo podcast. We are, but we also like to talk about some pop culture things, right? Yeah, I know. Like, okay, don't get me wrong. Like, okay, can I just vent for a second, I guess, while we're on this topic? Sure. Don't get me wrong. I love Bravo. I love it. I love the housewives. I love them. But at the end of the day, like, things happen elsewhere, too, that I also love and that I'm also interested Mm -hmm. in. And it's like... I, I'm not going to put baby in a corner. I'm just not. No. We're pop culture reality TV legal analysts. Exactly. That's what, you know, and. It's what my resume so says. anyways, we're <laughs> adding that to the resi. Uh-huh. So let's get in the first story that we are going to talk about. You guys, it's happened again. Miss Countess Luan. She was kicked out of the townhouse in Manhattan. And Lauren, do you know anything about this bar? So I do based on what my brother told me. Because, you know, my brother used to live out there. Yes. 
So will you describe it then for the listeners? Because this isn't just some random bar that you're going to wander into on no. a drunken Saturday night. No, this is very deliberately like, OK, according to my brother who lived and sort of still does in New York as a gay man. He told me that that is the bar you go to to like where the young guys go to meet a sugar daddy mm-hmm. or you just know you're it's just a straight up gay bar like and it's straight it's like no straight people really and there's drag queens and performances and pianos and like it just seems like a great time. But it's very very high end from what I've heard. Yes, it's like exactly. It's business. a sugar daddy place. Like, That's where you go. It is yeah, it's like the elite of the elite gay men in Manhattan are going there mm-hmm. to enjoy a cocktail on the weekend. And, you know, the cute boys are going to roll in and, yes. you know, there's going to be some mingling. Yes. So it's very, very nice from what I've heard. Mm-hmm. So Luann, I, I invite <laughs> you to go read. I think it was the Today Show. This is where I pulled this information from. According to Luann, she had been practicing and rehearsing all day. Before she went to this bar, to the townhouse, prepping for her Broadway show. She had been rehearsing, hanging out with producers and friends. And so they go. She was having a grand old time, decided to hop up on the stage because they allow you to do like a, they allow you, I guess, to hop on the mic and perform. It's like interactive and just give people an opportunity to sing. And so I guess she got up there and jammed with the piano guy for a little bit, the pianist, and sang some Broadway songs. Yeah. Yeah. Sing sing some Broadway songs. And then it turned, you guys. Oh, God. So according to an onlooker, Luann (laughs) appeared to be extremely liquored up and kept on insisting of singing her song, Money Can't Buy You Class. Money Can't Buy You Class. And so she's being extremely insistent on singing the song and the piano. The pianist is like, well, I don't know that, of course, because we're talking about an upscale Manhattan bar. You're right. He's like, there's... I can do rocket, <laughs> he's like, man. <laughs> he's like, I went to Juilliard. I do not know what <laughs> Muddy Can't Buy You class is. <laughs> and so she kept, though, I guess, nagging him and he kept saying no, no, no. But then she insisted and I guess was like belting it out. Oh my and God. trying to sing it on her own. And the crowd kept booing her and kept and she kept yelling and insisting, I'm a cabaret star. Oh, my God. That is so fucking Luann. It like I can see it. And I wish I was there <laughs> before being thrown out, you guys, by staff. So the so she then issued an apology to the staff at the townhouse saying, you know, after getting kicked out because she was hogging the mic. OK, <laughs> And so she issues an apology and she said, I want to apologize to the staff at the townhouse and anyone else I may have offended by my behavior. Clearly, my struggles with alcohol are real. I've made great strides over the years. There's been times I've fallen. It's one day at a time. I'm in recovery and taking steps to ensure this doesn't happen again. I'm grateful to my family and my friends for their constant support. Well, you know, I got to say she's running out of friends with constant support because at some point, like, I know we say, like, listen, love ya, like, we'll support you endlessly. But at some point, like, bruh, yeah, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, girlfriend. But with what we've seen going on in the Bravo world about kind of them canceling Real Housewives of New York City, creating a new brand for Real Housewives of New York City, and then creating this, like, legacy, you know, kind of offshoot of Roni with like Mm -hmm. the older women I mean think about it history repeats itself every single time Luann faces some type of obstacle in her life she relapses in some way you know and there's always these like manic episodes and I think you're right that she's like starting to run out of friends that can be consistent and she's I think she's just hanging out with the wrong people maybe And I think the thing with Luann is like, listen, I know that like alcoholism and stuff like that's terrible and really hard to deal with. And, you know, it comes with the ups and the downs and like the relapses Mm -hmm. and the sober moments. But Luann, like, lady, you just came out with like a a faux rosé brand like you have this new brand of like being sober and all this like 
I I totally get it if you're going to yeah. relapse. Like, it's very hard to stay sober. Like, I can't imagine how mm-hmm. people do it. But do, like, don't go out to the, like, most prestigious yeah. gay bar and sing a song. Like, come on. That's asking to be well, put on page six. And we have taken the firm stance, I think, in prior episodes that we've never thought Luann was ever voluntarily sober. Um, you know, right. that story and that narrative she spewed during the early stage, like post-release, where she's like, I'm sober. It's because she had an app, abs- like an abstention clause in her probation. Yeah, exactly. And, so, and that they, that was just for optics. And I think she's trying to be sober because she thinks that's what people want. And she's actually not becoming sober because it's something she mm-hmm. needs to do. Right. And maybe this is a wake up call. Because I love sober Luann. She's so gorgeous. Oh, my God. Yes. I mean, and she. Stunning. She 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 does things that are normal. She's just a great. When she's sober, she's amazing because she's herself. And And she's more fun to watch. Yeah. And when she gets these. I mean, we all love when she fell in the bushes. Okay. I mean, that was an iconic moment. I'll never forget it. Iconic. So it sounds like maybe she's going into recovery if it's a formal or informal. Not sure. But I bet she's going to probably go do like a 30 day stint somewhere. Yeah. Homegirl's about to go to Promises where Anna Delvey was. (laughs) Like she needs some R&R and some yoga and a detox. Um, But my favorite part of the whole I was reading the article on page six Like that's where my brother Uh sent it to me from And there's this paragraph That made me laugh so hard It says Undeterred and liquored up De La Seps kept belting out Jumbled version of songs Which were so intolerable That the crowd began booing her In front of stunned drag queens Including Tiffany Ann Coke Shiny Penny Lauren O'Dare and Chandelier says another source and it's just like I've never heard of the term oh. stunned drag queen drag queens I've never heard I of mean, that <laughs> that's I mean, bad you don't want the gays to turn on you <laughs> you don't no you don't I mean there's no way she's ever gonna go back there right and well unfortunately I mean, this is Luann she's probably there for brunch to be quite frank with you Stick to the Regency. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Anyways, that's our update on Luann. I guess we'll continue to keep you abreast if we get any. I'm sure there's, I'm sure if recovery's not around the corner, another incident's going to be right around Mm -hmm. the corner. Exactly. Just you wait. Wine Wednesday's coming quicker than you think. (laughs) It sure is. Okay. So my story is about our, the world's most favorite cheerleader, besides Torrance, Hayden Penetier got into a fist fight on Thursday. <gasps> okay. I am so excited you're talking about this because I saw the headline and I interpreted it as she was, you know, caught in the crossfire. You know, right. like people, and, were, people were going crazy and she was just there. All right. And I feel like, listen, I don't know if I'm a Hayden Penetier stan or something, but I'm going to take the side of Hayden. Like, I think she kind of was just there. Okay. Okay. But Okay. Okay. So I'll tell you the story. Okay. So Hayden and her boyfriend, we'll call him. His name's Brian. Um, They were out at a hotel bar called Sunset Marquee, which is a very she, she, she kind of place to hang out. Mm Mm-hmm. So they're at the bar and allegedly there's like some other group there and the other group left a bad tip for the waitress. And so Mm -hmm. Hayden's boyfriend started talking shit and was like, what the fuck? Like you're leaving a bad tip, X, Y, Z, whatever. So then the other like the people he was yelling at said that Brian spit on them. And that's when. Okay, wait. And that's when everything flipped. Okay, first of all. Shout out to Brian and Hayden for standing up for their waitresses. We've all worked in the service injury mm-hmm. in industry, customer service. We know what it's like. There's nothing more offensive than not leaving a tip. Exactly. I, I And so God bless them for standing up and saying something. Because I have, have you ever been with somebody that leaves zero dollars? I've been with people who leave like very bad tips that it's almost like, worse than leaving zero dollars like I would have been more comfortable with them leaving zero dollars and then I overcompensate 
You know what I mean? I'm like, uh-huh. okay, I can't. Like, then it's like, oh, you're not even going to tip 15%. Like, I guess I'm tipping 100, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so they, so then, Bri- did you say Brian's the one that spit? Or so somebody allegedly, spit the, at other, Brian? the other party said that Brian spit at them. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I mean, we can't be spitting you guys in this like COVID pandemic, post pandemic world. That's assault with a deadly weapon, I would argue. (laughs) So (laughs) so I guess they started fighting in the bar and then the hotel people were like, get the F out. Like, I'm so sorry, but like we just can't have this kind of ruckamaro in here. So they go outside and I guess the uh, boyfriend Brian and this other guy are still going at it and fighting and Hayden was trying to break up the fight so she like gets in the middle as you do and she's like what five zero feet tall yeah trying to get in the middle of these two guys apparently she got kicked in the face (gasps) I know that's alleged okay Hayden if you're listening let, let us know if it was true or not But apparently, like, finally a security guard came and broke everything up. And they're all getting ready to go back in the hotel. And then Brian goes back for fucking more and starts going more after this guy. Okay, so apparently this whole time. Okay, so originally, okay, so originally started off with a good deed and then really just went full 180. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Full 180. So I guess while she's trying to break up the fight, Hayden is screaming, Brian, Brian, jail, jail reminding it's brian like, what it's like it's like yelling at your dog like stella bad dog yeah Sit. exactly exactly <laughs> cage crate you know yeah. so she's yelling at the at him because um apparently mr brian is on probation until the year 2025 <gasps> because he was for arrested what? for dv and assault attacks oh. against hayden Whoa. And apparently okay. uh, he was also ordered to four years probation, 52 DV classes and a $500 mm-hmm. fine. Which is standard. We know that mm-hmm. 52 week class is required as a term of probation. If you plead to a domestic violence charge mm-hmm. and they are very strict, like you have to go Good. every single if you miss a cl- yeah, if you miss a class, like your probation can just be outright terminated. Yeah. OK, so I know domestic violence is a very sensitive topic, so I just want to touch on this briefly my understanding is that Hayden Panettiere has had a history of being in uh physically abusive relationships mm-hmm. this her ex-husband correct um so wasn't the, he also arrested or her I prior think partner he was, was a also wrestler arrested? he was like an MMA fighter or something wasn't he mm-hmm. he's big huge huge yeah but I so, I believe that you're correct he's there was something weird there too I feel like we need to protect Hayden Panettiere at all costs now. That Does Hayden Panettiere have any good her. girlfriends? Like, we need to bring her into our friend group of you and me. Yeah. <laughs> Sad. we could save everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope. Okay, so he was. So so we don't know if any charges were pressed or anything, do at we? At this point, at this no time? charges have been pressed or anything. Like, the o- the only reason we know about this is because somebody caught a few snaps and all that. Okay. Like, no one even but, got footage from inside the restaurant. Okay, but we know that he is on probation. And this, the, the fact, if the police were called and they created an incident report and they interviewed Brian... Brian's probation officer is going to be notified that he was involved in this incident and it's likely going if not going to be fresh charges it will at least probably be a probation violation yeah unless there is an evidence I mean if he was the aggressor it sounds like um might need more than the 52 week class maybe a yoga session you know like sound bath you need Mm -hmm. to decompress honey what is going on I mean I I mean it's like you're sitting there. You you're on probation, like for hitting people, and it's now you're so, just gonna go hit people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like again, came in with the best intention, but wow, it turned it turned dark really it fast. It did. You it know? did. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you think? I hope Hayden's okay. I mean, gosh, terrible if she got kicked in the face. Yeah. And if she was. 
if she was caught in the middle we hate to see that i mean i have been at bars before where i have seen that's why just don't if you see men fighting this is a psa leave do not interject yourself because i was at a new year's eve party in newport beach one Mm -hmm. year this was probably like 15 years ago Mm -hmm. and a girl was trying to break up a fight between her and her boy or her boyfriend another man got involved the guy punched her square in the face yeah it was an accident of course knocked her out fell backwards yeah my jaw hit the floor as i was shoving a burrito in my mouth (laughs) that's why just don't get involved no no also don't get involved don't get hurt and also don't fight each other just fucking grow up for god's sakes it's so caveman-y when people fight like it bugs me I mean, there's always a time and place, you know, like in a pro- self-defense, right? Okay, but, totally. I mean, at a Sunday brunch in the city? I mean, you know, it's, it's like, just... just go give the lady a hundred bucks, Brian. Like, I don't know why we're fighting. I don't know yeah, why we're physically you're... fighting is the thing. Like, just give the lady more money if you're so mad. And why are we spitting? You why know? are we spitting? We're in a pandy. Just... I'd hit you too. <laughs> yeah. I would. <laughs> it's so crazy. Okay, yeah. So okay, what well, what do you think though before we move on? Do you think Hayden was an, a bystander or was she like bystander? See, bystander. Yeah. But but to play like somewhat of a devil's advocate, yeah. you know, you you are a reflection of the company that you keep. Uh-huh. And you know, there's a certain type of person that's attracted to a person that has a little bit of rage in them and Mm -hmm. i'm assuming both of them probably have a temper oh yeah i'm sure maybe we don't know the full story so i'm not i don't want to we're speculating yeah i would i would assume she was a bystander you know she may popped off maybe made a comment oh i would have i mean that's who i am in the relationship i'm the one just popping off like i would have been the girl and like seriously you're not leaving a tip what i know exactly and then my boyfriend sitting there like, please shut up. Stop Don't talking. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, really? Well, my boyfriend's going to kick your ass, okay? <laughs> no, I would never yeah. say that. But <laughs> As they're like walking out the door. <laughs> I had a friend who did like that. And she was like, my brother's going to kick your ass. And these people literally came for her brother. And we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. She's <laughs> drunk. <laughs> it's a figure of speech, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we're both dating like kind of nerdyish men, you yeah. know, who are who are very protective, <laughs> <laughs> but also like very just like please come on, let's we're right, chill. very yeah, chill, exactly. Okay, can well, you please tell can... me about the next story? Oh, you guys. Okay, so as I said in the beginning, we're doing some non housewife stories, and this is just to piggyback off the hate of minutes here, if at all. I promise the next story is going to be uh, housewives related. But yes. this, you guys, it's not criminal. I mean, I guess you could allege that it's criminal and criminal behavior in some way. This is a story I don't know if any of you guys are aware of. Remy Bader. She is a fashion, a plus size fashion influencer, model. Icon, really. Um, she Icon. She blew up about two years ago, like right in the peak mm-hmm. of COVID. Because she was sharing these like realistic fashion hauls on her TikTok where she was reviewing like H&M and Zara and for brands not being size inclusive or saying, you know, hey, here's a size extra large. It should fit this body. And then she puts it on and you like, can't even button it. I mean, yeah, we've all been there before. We've all been there. She just put it on TikTok. I mean, brave. She, she yeah, she put it on TikTok and she like shows her body. Like she'll put bathing suits on and stuff. And so anyways. She's moved on from taking down fashion brands to taking down airlines. Good for her. So she is an avid traveler, obviously. And so she went and took a Delta flight. So she took a Delta flight and she was posted on her TikTok and was complaining that, you know, the seatbelts are too small and it's ridiculous. Like, come on here. Let me see. I I have a quote. So the New York Post shared and re kind of like wrote a story on this whole TikTok that she posted a while ago. And so Remy Bader calls out Delta Airlines for allegedly having, in quotes, scrawny seatbelts that apparently don't fit around her waist. She told Delta, in quotes, figure it out and said, I shouldn't need to ask for an extender. It should be easy at Delta. Mm -hmm. So 
Bader then claimed that the new planes have way shorter seatbelts than they did before, and she was freaking out after not being able to fasten her seatbelt before takeoff. And then she went and she approached the flight attendant. The flight attendant said, well, you have to sit down and here, take a, uh, take a seatbelt extender. Uh And I guess that made Remy Bader feel embarrassed. I would. So the New York Post. So the New York Post posts this, obviously, on their website and then on their Instagram. And the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because there has been a lot of backlash about Remy Bader making this moment go viral and there's also a lot of backlash from the new york post about writing the story up really i invite you yes so i invite you to go to the comment section on the new york post instagram i'm gonna read some of the controversial comments because this thing was blowing up so one person commented and said you have to bring your own extender you know another person said airlines give out seatbelt extenders all you have to do is ask another person called bader entitled Somebody said there's Entitled? lots of options. Lose lots of options. Lose weight. Get a seatbelt extender. Don't fly at all if it's an issue. But no, she needs to call out a non-issue and get some in- attention instead. Somebody said maybe what? she should go for a walk. What? Somebody And then another commenter said the airline should give her a complimentary gym membership. <gasps> so there are, I think, almost 2,000 comments on this post. Holy Bader gets fuck. involved in these comments, starts responding to people. And a lot of people eventually came to Remy's defense. Yeah, I hope. And people were shaming the New York Post, saying, how dare you? Like, why are you sharing the story and allowing these negative comments? And Remy <laughs> stepped into a conversation where somebody told her to eat less. And she replied, no, with a smiley face. Right. Like, fuck so, off. So I wanted to bring this up because I wanted your opinion on it. Of, okay. You know, is this something that the airline should be taking into consideration or is the is the option a seatbelt extender? It's not like they're being denied act like somebody who is of plus size who can't fit in a regular seatbelt is being denied access to fly. There's just an alternate option that being the extender. But she thinks that she shouldn't have to ask and that it should be size inclusive. And I would have to agree with Remy. Like, I don't understand. We've all been in an airplane. And how many Mm -hmm. times are you like, holy fuck, like the seat gets smaller and smaller. Like these seatbelts get tighter and tighter. And like, yeah, okay, I understand there has to be some limit. Like you can't have like a five foot long seatbelt. Like, sure. Mm -hmm. But Remy is a very normal sized person. Like Remy Mm -hmm. is not like a 500 pound six foot tall person like she's probably like maybe 250 maybe my height like it's a very normal body type that people have and I think that if you're telling someone with a normal body type like well you could ask for a seatbelt extender it's like or they could just make the thing fit like why should it be that after your size you know whatever it works out to I don't know medium or whatever like you have to ask for a seatbelt. What's the point? They have all the seatbelts there anyway, so you can't tell me it's a weight thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, what's the point? Yeah. I don't get it. Why Why make it smaller? Why not give us the extra slack? Why not? Yeah. Pull it and tighter. And to play devil's advocate, yeah, I, to play devil's advocate, though, it's if this is only a small percentage of the population, right, that are requiring the seatbelt extenders, why are these airlines going to then accommodate but is you know, it a small population? A, is it? I, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I would but be I was just very trying curious. to play devil's advocate. Yeah, of course. It would be interesting. It would be really interesting to get a like I would a pie like a chart from yeah, all of Yeah, I would like to know how from, many people per how many flights do you give out seatbelt extenders and of uh-huh. those flights how many do you give out? I would love to know that. Because I have <sighs> Gosh, what airline was And I you on? know what? How on? about this? If you need one, you should be able to claim one at the fucking desk or something so that you don't have to try to buckle walk all the way back down the aisle, do all this shit when you just need to fucking sit down in your seat and leave. I will say I did do an Amazon search to see if you can buy them yourself. And you can. You can buy a seatbelt extender and you can carry it with you. And you can have it. And, you know, if that is something, because there is nothing more uncomfortable than feeling like you're having to. Like you don't fit. Put 
Well, physically. to put your insecurity on blast. Well, yeah. yeah, and to put something that you're deeply insecure about, you know, on blast to a stranger and then have them say, well, you know, you're too fat. Here's the extender. Eat less? Like, what? Eat, yeah. So there always is that option to carry the extender. I think, though, like, like you said, are we going to be creating seatbelts that are five feet long? No. Okay. No. Like, let's just be reasonable here. Like, if a reasonably sized person needs a seatbelt extender, then your Uh seatbelt is unreasonable. Just make it longer. Is there some reason why? Is it after a certain length, if you have it with some slack, like nobody's seatbelt works? Like, you know, what's the deal? I wonder. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a lot. It's confusing. I'm on Team Remy. I'm neutral. I think flying is already, I think flying's already uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I think that it's literally like, it's a seatbelt. It's the, it's a safety thing. It is a safety thing. Yeah. But I'm very neutral on this, on this topic because I then think, okay, we're going, then we offer seatbelt or we, you know, lengthen the seatbelts, right? Is the next option then to widen the seats as well? Like, where does it stop, you know? And I just want to know the amount of people that I would like to know the percentage of people that fit comfortably in. I mean, yeah, but the whole like, where does it stop thing? It's like, yeah, so we, so maybe they do widen the seats and we can actually fit. (laughs) You know, and we can and then strap ourselves in and like not have to Mm -hmm. be closer to a stranger than I've ever been to even my boyfriend. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's like a slippery slope. Like, that's just one of those things like, okay, so what if we could experience comfortable air travel? What if? And I will say when I was. It's already disgusting. I was flying. I think it was Southwest or United. I want to say it was Southwest. Mm -hmm. But I sat down and the seatbelt was so short and it was so... T- I'm a size 12, 14. Yeah. A size 12, mm-hmm. 14. That is a normal average body weight, mm-hmm. right? And in a pant yeah. size. And so for me to sit there, though, and for it to be uncomfortable, it's like, holy shit. And I remember the woman who sat next to me, too, made a comment. And she was herself yeah. a normal sized. She was smaller than me and said, God, this thing is tight. And these seats feel small. Yeah. And I did. See? I invite you to go look because there are websites or there. I think in the New York Post, they actually talked about the length, the length of seatbelts for each airline. And I think Southwest is the smallest and then Delta and then United. I think United's the most size inclusive, I guess. But it's a it's an interesting conversation. Oh, and I, I, I can't wait because I feel like Delta is going to respond because it's picking up so much steam. And well, and Delta is like a a preferred airline. People love to Mm -hmm. fly Delta. So it's like, I don't know. I just don't understand. Like, I feel like I have just a problem with air travel in general because I feel like they squeeze us into this tiny tube. That's so scary. You know, those flight attendants only get paid from the second the plane's up in the air to the second the plane touches the ground. And I just feel like. It's just they're always like, we got to save money. We got to weigh your bag. Oops, you're a pound over. You need to pay us $50 and your seatbelt doesn't fit. It's like, holy fuck. Like, can I just get there? I mean, if Remy Remy Bader can take down the airline industry, like more power to her. I think it's a Mm -hmm. but I just I wanted to talk about this article because I thought it was an interesting conversation to have because there is such there's people that are extremely fat phobic and there's people that are ignorant to body sizes and body inclusivity i just i can't understand an argument against a seatbelt when it's a fucking seatbelt and i also want to remind people like when people make comments of like eat less and go to the gym it's like there are people it's called genetics like you could work out every day and eat healthy and still be curvy you know, and still be a size well, six, and like still be a size 16, 18 and be extremely healthy and active. I would also 
<laughs> yeah. And I would argue that most people before they get on a plane have just starved themselves, got a spray tan and lifted <laughs> weights and only ate spinach for about two weeks before they got on that plane and they still felt bloated and they didn't want to be in a bathing suit. And now they have to ask for a seatbelt extender. Here's the thing. Let's just all be comfortable. Yeah. No one's asking for like uh, separators, you know, where you can't even see the person next to you. But like, I mean, those would I would like I mean, to that fit. would be great. And maybe that's going to be our TikTok right. trend is, you know, I would like I would like a shield between myself and the person sitting next to me. And don't. Oh, for sure. <laughs> even first class. Like, look, I phone phone first class every once in a while. And even that you're close to the person. And another thing, if you're going to put me by one of those unaccompanied minors, you better be paying for my flight. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fucking babysitter, international fucking you know babysitter what? in the sky. What and the if hell? You voluntar- <laughs> if you voluntarily agree to sit in that emergency exit row and God forbid the plane go down and I have to help you, like, I feel like you should get the Medal of Honor. You know, like there should be... S- You get a free fucking snack box if you sit in those spots. That's what I think. I don't get it. They are so rude. And, you know, they go around with that bag. Trash, trash, trash. My brother says they're not asking for trash. They're telling you that you're trash. (laughs) And tell your brother is a flight attendant. (laughs) Yeah, it's my brother's a flight attendant. (laughs) Oh, my God. I worked with somebody that was a flight attendant. and She had the craziest stories. But. You guys, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. I know it was very non-Bravo related, but I thought it was a good conversation. I liked it. I feel impassioned. I might join Remy Bader's fight to take down Delta (laughs) Airlines in a safe way, non-terroristical way. (laughs) Yeah, don't get us flagged. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Metaphor. Like all above water here. Talking about the corporation, (laughs) not the planes. Okay. Right, exactly. The planes stay in the air as long as possible. Okay, moving on. Tell me what the hell is going on with Louis and Tree. Oh, my God. Okay, so New Jersey has been flipped on its side. Okay, so Louis has been sued and he filed for bankruptcy. <gasps> and wait, wait, and wait. Teresa had to go to the hospital. Wait, 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 wait. He filed for bankruptcy? Okay. Yes. So this is how it all starts. I wrote this sentence and I really like it. So I'm going to read it. Teresa's boy toy is in legal trouble. I felt like page six when I read that. Okay. So several people have sued him and his company. His company is allegedly called Digital Media Solutions for violating... The Telephone Consumer Protection Act. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm so thankful that we are finally getting tough on the law that that I think we should be getting but- tough on. Yes. Stop fucking calling me. This is harassment. Stop fucking texting me. I'm done. Absolutely. And do you ever notice when I, at least I've, no- I've noticed this, like if you start online shopping, you know, and sometimes you get annoyed when they say accept all cookies and that thing pops up and you just like click allow. So it just goes yeah. away. Yeah. Do you notice yes. that you get inundated with emails, text, like spam text messages and spam phone calls? I'll have like five spam calls in a, in a row because yeah. I was on William Sonoma, you know? Okay. I was telling George Glass about this and he goes, whenever a computer asks you if this is okay, say no. Yeah. And I was like, wait, you yes. can say no to that? So I'm like on the internet and I go, I don't know if the page will still work. And then it comes up and it's like the cookies. And I go, no. And the page still fucking yes. worked. So you know what? Fuck your cookies. We're gluten free All now. you have to do is hit manage cookies or when that box populates and you just hit the auto button that says turn off all data collection. Yeah, that's important, you guys, because we can't be. Get, here's the we other. Now I'm on another we can't soapbox. Be because and scammed, okay? No, and we can't be giving away all of our hard work no. for free. I who sits there and does the scrolling? Who sits there and does the liking and the commenting? Okay, Me. well, and okay, you. Wait, 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 wait. Again. To- we to do the work. Devil's advocate here. 
there are days oh where absolutely God. I I I am impassioned by my privacy and I don't want anybody watching me. But then there are moments where I'm extremely lazy and I do love a targeted ad that's doing the shopping for me. You know, I agree with that. Like, okay. I do love that where like I'll go on West Elm and I'll look at some plates, you know, and then it gives me a plethora of yeah. different types of options. And I'm like, wow, I would have never found that. Like, thank you. Data collection. Thank you, Louie. That's, you know, thank you, Thanks, Jen. Louis. You know, I do have to say thank you to Louie and to Jen Shaw because you're right. It's like, how many times have you been like, you know, I do need a new phone charger <laughs> or whatever you need that you start saying really slow and loud around your devices so that it'll tell you what to buy. You could just buy this one. I want to get to the point where Amazon ships me my stuff without oh, that's me ordering around the, it. That's around the corner. All I want, you send me whatever. You think I need it? You're mm-hmm. right. You're probably right. So Louie's in trouble because his company is the company of all companies that does all that stuff. So I went to his website, Digital Media Solutions. It's gone, obviously, because he's is being it showing sued. an error page, so, like the 404 error found. E- wow. Exactly. Uh-huh. Website not found. So website's down, but of course... Bloomberg.com has got the deets. So Bloomberg describes Digital Media Solutions, Inc. as a marketing technology company. The company develops in-house digital media solutions that connects and tracks digital performance marketing data, offering valuable insight into consumer behaviors and campaign performance. Corporate words. DMS serves customers. Yeah, it's blah, blah, blah. We are the cookies. It's like when Jen Shaw was describing what she did on, on the last um, episode of The Reunion oh where Andy Cohen's like, what's monetization? She's like, monetization is, right. you know, it's like, shut right. up. You don't know what you're doing. Right. You're using adjectives, verbs, nouns to describe. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, data strategies and data configurations. It's like, what? Yeah. So here's the other thing. Whenever I hear the word data, because I live with a fucking data engineer architect, ar- architect, um, I immediately think personal information mm-hmm. because that's what the data is. And so I'm sitting here like, as soon as I hear that you're accused of data anything, like I know that you're creepy with like all my information letting yeah. it go. And I don't trust Louis. I didn't trust him before. And I don't trust him okay. now. And apparently. Who's what? suing him? So, so a bunch of people were suing him last year. Like there were like three different lawsuits of people who were like you. They sent that accusing Louis of sending Louis's company of soliciting or sending unsolicited text messages like. Uh, click here for free six months of car insurance or like um, Bait like clicks. quick Kia's having a sale. Yeah. You know, when you get those links in your text messages and then he'd also allegedly his company would text fake links to redirect back to his website. So like, you know, when you'll get the the thing, claim your prize, blah, blah, blah. Or like Verizon, you've paid your bill. Click mm-hmm. here. And it takes you to like another website he does that allegedly and somebody now is claiming that the way that louis gets his customers and allegedly harasses these people is by pulling phone numbers from the do not call registry (gasps) so that's not good okay so in fact that's bad So louis is the owner ceo ceo like full blown runs this busy allegedly allegedly Allegedly, from page six and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so then separately from him being a scammy scam, scammer scam, he was also sued in 2021. Ew, why did I say it like that? For allegedly, allegedly mismanaging funds from a vendor that he had a business partnership with. So he was in charge of some transaction for like fruits and Uh veggies. So specifically a company sold his company fruits and veggies in the amount of one hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred and four dollars so this is like probably like a grocery store shipment or something you know 
or like a fruit stand. Like this is obviously a store. So apparently Louis company or Louis or whatever allegedly never paid those people for their fruits and veggies. And because they never got that money, it's a lot of money, a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. They had to file bankruptcy and, and then during this website, this website, I don't know if I took my pill today because I'm having fritzy brain. <laughs> but um, then Louie, in turn, filed bankruptcy so bank- for $1 million. Okay, so cor- like bankruptcy, bankruptcy for his corporation, not personal bankruptcy. You know, page six only said filing bankruptcy. So I it didn't give me a chapter or anything, actually. So I'm not sure. Do you think sure. Teresa Schwitzen over there stressing out? I- Okay, so like, what is happening? What, what, what's going on? What? It's, it's odd. You think she's gonna sign the prenup now? You think she's gonna get married? Like, I hope she does not marry this man. I hope that they stay in a relationship. Of course, like we do not know what's going on behind closed doors. This is just one article, but I just hope and pray to God that she does not get married. Keep your assets. No, keep your, I just... keep your assets separate. Keep yourself separate. <sighs> do not in any way connect yourself to somebody who is already going through legal issues like she went to prison yeah. prison i know i know and i just don't want her to then be on the hook financially for his wrongdoing yeah Sad. i agree and and i feel like Okay, when she was like, oh, you know, well, we love each other and he has his money and I have my money. Okay, but at the end of the day, this is a man who just showed you he he makes terrible decisions. And once you get married, it's not he has his money and I have my money. It's also and we have our money. And so I don't know. It's like I just get worried for her. So so, you know, she ended up in the hospital this weekend. Yeah. So apparently Teresa was admitted to the hospital this week um, for an emergency medical procedure. And her like publicist released a statement saying that it's it was a non cosmetic emergency surgery. I wonder if her her pink or not pink. What is that? Your um, appendix appendix burst. Well, I feel like you would say, oh, she had a burst appendix, not a non-cosmetic emergency surgery. Like, all emergency surgery is pretty much non-cosmetic, which makes me think she busted a titty open. (laughs) I think she popped a tit. It, because that's an emergency and and then that's the only thing that I could think of yeah. them being like, yes, yeah, she had to get her breast redone because it popped. Yeah, but I think it might be something. I think it might be an appendix or hmm. did she break a bone or something and they're just saying, you know, it's a non-cosmetic See, and surgery. She's posting people- like she's posting cryptically like the girls who post their hospital bracelets, like for sprained ankles, you know, <laughs> where she's like. Oh, like Gia's like, oh, you're so strong, mom. Like all this stuff. It like making me think it's, it's got to be a titty. No, I think you're wrong. <laughs> I think you're wrong. Well, I wonder what. Okay, I well, do I'm wonder sure what it is. I bet we'll find out soon. There's no way they're going to keep that secret. No. No, no. way. Well, I no mean. Way. So that's what's going on in Jersey, but. It sounds like we're going to have some serious updates pretty soon. Why don't we take Why don't we take a little hop over to Stanton Island? What's going on over there? Oh, my God, you guys. Is that what it's called? Stanton? I thought it was Staten Island. Isn't it Stanton Island or something? Staten Island. Staten? Staten. We're going Bravo adjacent here, okay? So we're going to hop over the pond, hop over the Hudson, Mm -hmm. I think. Probably totally wrong. Sounds right. I have a gripe, and this may just be my criminal behavior. It's going to be my last story. But what is going on with Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson? Because oh my god, I understand. So happy for her. she seems very happy. She did a that that interview with Ellen DeGeneres where she was like gushing over Pete. But I have a comment, and you guys saw it on our Instagram post. I don't understand why we are continuing this narrative of my girl is a lawyer. And we are continuing to pretend like Kim Kardashian is an attorney. Like she is in her first going into her second year of law school. Yeah. 
She's the furthest thing from an attorney at she's, this point. She's like, so far away from an attorney. And it's like Talentless created those sweatshirts. It says Kim's my lawyer. Now Pete has the my girl is my lawyer. And even Jen Shaw was like, I want Kim on my legal team. It's like she's not an I attorney. Know. She's, She's a law student, for God's sakes. And listen, we love Elle Woods as much as the next girl. Absolutely. But you're still a fucking student. And at least she was under the supervision of other attorneys during this trial thing, which was still unrealistic. But Kim, Kim, you're you're a two L. Just it's, chill. And She's I know pe- totally people, a front row gunner. No, but pe- I'm sure there are people who are like, oh my gosh, you guys are just being hypercritical. No, the Maybe. reason why... It bothers me, like me and you, and I know other people I went to law school, I've seen them post it too Mm -hmm. on their Instagram stories, because you're promoting yourself and you're holding yourself out to be an attorney. And Mm -hmm. I guess I never have operated that way because you have a long way to go. Like you have the bar exam to pass and the bar exam is extremely difficult. And how embarrassing to fail it. I mean, like I did no, five no, no, times. But, no, no, but I'm saying like how embarrassing to fail. Like you're holding yourself out to be an attorney. Your boyfriend has. Right. I have. My girl is a lawyer and you have merch that literally says that. Right. And it's and just you, a very odd right. position to take. And and it bothers me because there are so many people out there that have worked their asses off, who have gone to law school, who have taken the bar exam and I don't know. It's weird. I find it odd. It's like, it's like she's misappropriating or like. It's, it's to me, it's like if you had a friend who went to like get her LVN license uh and then you were like her boyfriend had a tattoo that said, my girl's a heart surgeon. And you're like, oh, so far from heart surgeon, but on your way. <laughs> no, you know what I was comparing it to? And people are probably going to come for me for saying this. That's like me getting the Olympic rings tattooed or like my boyfriend <laughs> getting the Olympic rings tattooed on him because I th- I'm training for the Olympics. Right. It's like exactly. you don't you don't do that. Like you don't get the Olympic ring tattoo until after you've gone to the Olympics. And most often you've meddled, you know, Um, and I also I have it's another bone to weird. pick. It's weird. Why doesn't it say girlfriend? Why does it just say girl? I don't know. I don't know. And I I mean, it's a really cute. I think it's a super cute tattoo. Like if she really was an attorney and passed the bar. I think it, like more yeah. power to you. Absolutely. It's so cool. But it's just like she's so far away from being a lawyer that. I don't know. It bothers me. It bothers me, too. It's weird. But it is. It's like getting the Olympic ring tattoo. I know they're so far from. They're totally different things. But it's I think that's the only thing that I can analogize it. Like okay. It's an- I've I've literally gone to law school, graduated, taken the bar so many times. I could make one myself. <laughs> right. Have the degree like all that. And I can't call myself a lawyer. Yeah. So you definitely can. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Anyways. That Anyways, was my. Is that, that your the, criminal behavior? It, well, I do have another. I have an actual criminal behavior, but that was just my last story. I know people are probably so sick of talking about that and hearing about it, but it just, it bothers Sorry. people. And it's not just us. I've seen it, like I said, on other people's posts and yeah. stuff. It bothers people in the legal community because you're holding yourself out to be something you're not and you haven't earned mm-hmm. that right. You haven't. Right. Totally. That is a that is a prestigious thing that you are. It's like like you said, like being a doctor, like you're not a doctor until you've passed your medical boards and you're a resident like in your residency. Yeah, you can say you're in the medical field and you're you're in med school, but you're not a doctor yet. Like that's a title that you should feel so proud of obtaining after you've you know, like there's a sense of pride. We're like so scared to assume like I would be so scared to like. I don't know, like even pretend because it's like it's scary. That's what you could get sued. That's, yeah. And also it's just embarrassed. Like to me, it's embarrassing. You know, but I don't think Kim, Kim. like people have seen Kim's butthole. Like this is not going to embarrass her. <laughs> I feel like once you've done that, like you're fine it's with so really true. anything. It's so true. <laughs> OK, well, that was my last story. So do you have... Any criminal behaviors? 
I do. I do have criminal behavior, actually. I have... Um, it's a bone to pick criminal behavior and it has to it's it started on Instagram and then it made its way onto TV. So okay. my my criminal behavior is people who post Instagram photos of like their terrible wound that they just sustained. I fucking hate it. You are disgusting. You should be arrested, put in jail right now. Mm hmm. Don't pass go. It is it is so shocking. And s- every time it just catches me so off guard. And I'm very a queasy person about things yeah. like that. And it just rattles me. I, it's disgusting. Listen, if you want to show off your scars or whatever, can you just put a slideshow that says yeah. swipe for scar? You know, because <laughs> it's it's crazy. Swipe and for then, gaping wound. Yeah, and then it made its way onto below deck sailing. I don't know if you saw that episode where the chef uh-huh. hit his head. Ugh, I can't even get into it. The chef hit his head and part of his scalp came off. <gasps> and they kept fucking showing it and zooming in. And Cash, I literally am going to pass out right now thinking about no, it. No, like, I haven't been watching. I haven't had time to watch below deck. I had to take my glasses off so that I couldn't even... No. make out what was happening on the tv it was so bad it was so bad so that's my criminal behavior it's disgusting okay well i have a bravo criminal behavior it is have you Ooh. heard the news so jen shaw decided to create a merch line which i think was oh my um based off of our merch that she saw but mm. she did create a merch line and have you heard the allegations out there I think so. So she has been selling T-shirts for like 20 to $30. Things that say sayings of like Shaw Maisie, not guilty, free Jen Shaw. Sweatshirts for like 65 bucks. And then she's also selling like a bedazzled jacket for $120. Uh-huh. There are allegedly people have not received the merch that they ordered a while ago. <laughs> oh, weird. You got scammed by Jen Shaw. Welcome to the club. And so that is my criminal behavior. Like, girl, just learn. Just learn, 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 learn. But anyways. Learn your lesson. That was amazing. Well, um, oh my you Lord. guys, <laughs> I love, so that was Shaw amazing. I love this debriefs. I have so much fun doing them. Do you? I know. I have so much fun because we get to talk about everything. It's legal. It's pop culture. It's just a. I want to do more of these. I know. They're so fun. Let us know if you guys like them, if you hate them. I'm sure you'll let us know. (laughs) People do let us know a lot of things. Yeah. Um, And if you want more of this content because you just can't get enough of our glowing personalities, head on over to Patreon. Shout out to our VIP Patreon Patreon members, Classic Sky Tops, CK, and Mr. or Mrs. Smith. Um, We have a bunch of different tiers over on Patreon. You can... Get, be like on our newsletter tier where you get a newsletter every month, our commercial free tier. We put a lot of polls on there. Um, so it's really fun. And go rate, review, and subscribe. Please, five stars or no rating. Well, <laughs> we also share on our Patreon. We do a lot of personal stories as well. We get a little bit more. We're more open on the Patreon. And so if you like these little tangents we go on, segues, I invite you to go over to Patreon and subscribe. It's hilarious. Sometimes we get a little wine drunk. Um, (sighs) Check it out. Check it out. Until next time. Goodbye. Bye.